know y'all family members mental health. This man murked his own mother, his first cousin, and the mother of his kids on live. Went on Facebook and went to talk about everybody. He got that Jeffrey Dahmer. A 28 year old man named Scooter Bryce went on a killing spree. He woke up and decided to murder his 48 year old mother. And then after he murked her, he went to a different location and knocked off his first cousin on her birthday. After that, he went to a baby mama house and knocked her ass off too. And his baby mama was allegedly pregnant at the time of the execution. While doing all these executions, he went on Facebook and detailed why he did it. He said, Pig, I loved you, but you had to go. He told his baby mama that he loved her and he'll see her in hell though. Somebody went in the comments and said, tell me what I just heard ain't true, man. And he responded, man, it's true. I'm heading to Georgia to finish what I started, meaning he was headed to murk some more of his family members. His wife and his kids was in Georgia. While he was en route to Georgia, he got into a shootout with the police at some hotel or something like that. He was there. And then a woman went online and said she was grateful for not being able to meet up with him because she just had met him somewhere and they were supposed to meet up. But she was afraid that she would have been murked too. Shit! The shooting spree started here at this Motel 6 in Bradenton, where, as we mentioned, officials said Bryce shot his own mother around 9.15 last night. They said witnesses ID'd Bryce as the shooter. Then about half an hour later, deputies went to another shooting in Palmetto, where a 29-year-old woman was shot inside a parked SUV and later died. Again, the sheriff's office said witnesses told them Bryce was the shooter. Around 20 minutes later, Bradenton police responded to a third shooting, where they learned Bryce shot a third woman who died at the hospital. As this man knocked off every woman close to him from mother to baby mother to cousin and was going to his wife, remember he got a second baby mama. The streets say that they believe that he was high on that goddamn dope when he snapped. But I heard that he snapped because the family was trying to keep his kids from him. See, y'all better baby mamas. Y'all got to be careful keeping these kids from their daddy, man. The family said that this man had a mental illness and they didn't want the kids around him until he went and got looked at. He had stopped taking his meds and blacked out on everybody that he thought was involved with keeping his kids away from him. The reason he was heading to Georgia was to knock off his wife for sending him to goddamn Tampa, Florida, from part of Florida, Manatee County, some shit like that. But she only sent them there because she was trying to help him gain control of himself. Because if you can't be there for yourself, how you gonna be there for his kids, right? So check this out. The family recommended that he come there and get treated for his mental health issue and they was willing to assist him at the time when he was checking in the mental clinic right so i see the rumors in the comments talking about he was on the down low with another man but he wasn't caught on the down low with no man or none of that he allegedly just wanted to be around his kids but his wife thought he wasn't able mentally stable enough to be a father because his mental health issue so i'm telling you right now man Y'all got to start checking on people's mental health. I know y'all be wanting to invite everybody to your house. Check their mental health. You don't never know what a person going through. This is a sad situation for a man to knock off his own mama, knock off his own baby mama, knock off his first cousin on her birthday, baby mama pregnant with another child. Man, this man really went wild. But y'all comment below how y'all feel about this situation, man. Y'all let me know do y'all feel like he was wrong for going off because he was kept from his kids or do you feel like the family was right for trying to help him the way they did you understand me but everybody ain't playing comment below like this video make sure you manatee county are trying to figure out what set off a man to kill three women last night including his mother and cousin they say javante bryce also nearly fled the state to kill an ex-girlfriend in georgia before he died in a shootout with deputies. And that's not all. They believe Bryce initially targeted a different ex-girlfriend in Palmetto until his sister talked him down. As Fox 13's Kimberly Cuisan reports for us tonight, he then went after his other loved ones. This is where Bryce started. Deputies say he came to a motel room where his mom was staying. He told her he was sorry before he shot her three times. Once he opened that door, it was just 
sheer pandemonium chaos. At this Motel 6 around 9-17 Tuesday night, Christina Valentine's husband rushed to help 48-year-old Titi Maisha Scott. People yelling, screaming. He shot my mom, he shot my mom, somebody called 911. Deputy say Scott's own son, 28-year-old Javante Bryce, pulled the trigger. He was out of here before we even came out of our room. Like, it happened like that. 23 minutes later, deputies were called to this home off 26th Street Court East in Palmetto. I heard a pop. Deputies say he killed his cousin, 29-year-old Sequoia Bryce, as she was leaving a family cookout. That's when I see two people out there, and they're going, oh my God, they're on the ground. 24 minutes later, deputies say Bryce drove to an apartment complex in Bradenton off 51st Street Circle West, where he killed an ex-girlfriend's new partner, Sharrell Carter. He seemed to have an agenda. He knew exactly who he wanted to kill, and uh, you know he did not have a hard time locating them. Deputies sent out a bolo after learning Bryce was traveling to Georgia, where another ex-girlfriend lived. Hamilton County deputies tried to pull him over, but Bryce came out shooting. Deputies shot back, killing him. We don't know what set uh, this man off. Court records show Bryce had struggled with his mental health. Two risk protection orders were filed against him in 2021 and 2023. In them, it states he tried to commit suicide at least twice. Deputies are trying to piece together what was going through his mind the night of his rampage. This family is devastated. This is going to be uh, a very difficult thing for them to overcome. Sheriff Wells believes they could learn more information from a woman who was with Bryce and deputies believe she was traveling with him at the time of all the shootings and detectives are now interviewing her in Manatee County. Kimberly this is the book of Deuteronomy chapter 32 verse 39. See now that I even I am he and there is no power with me. I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. For I lift up my hand to heaven and say, I live forever. Koholayim la, Abanawa, Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rakat, Kodash. Double honors to the elder apostles and elder bishops of Great Millstone who rule well. Salutations to the Akim out there on the highways and the byways. Salutations to the hopeful elect. Salutations to you speckled birds, you Israelite foreigners. And shalom to the Akwaf, sitting and listening in silence as the scriptures say to do so. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 39 in the GNT. I and I alone am the most high. No other power is real. I kill and I give life. I wound and I heal, and no one can oppose what I do. As surely as I am the living God, I raise my hand and I vow. And that's something that our people, you know, not only our people, but the whole world doesn't understand that the Heavenly Father ordains death and ordains life. You know, as it says, he wounds, he heals. So when somebody's getting sick, that's a commandment. That's an order from the Heavenly Father above, man. You know, to cause that affliction upon that 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 person, man. When somebody gets put to death, that's the Most High calling that commandment for it for it to be brought uh brought to life, man. Okay, I'm gonna read this again. Deuteronomy 32 verse 39 in a GNT. I and I alone am the Most High. No other God is real. I kill and I give life. And see, that's a lot of people don't understand that the Most High, the Heavenly Father, He kills and He gives life. Nothing happens without the Heavenly Father say so, man. So everything that you saw in this news clip was ordained, predestinated, and brought forth and thought and thought by the Most High, Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai, man. Okay, and this, you know, it was a, it was the son that you know took out the mother, a cousin, a baby mother, and then was traveling back back to Georgia to take out his wife, man. Okay? And see, these are all judgment calls from Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shah. It, you know, obviously, it, it, it may seem like a, a sad story, but none of these people were innocent, man. None of these people that the Lord put down were innocent. Okay? Point blank period, man. 
let's grab this. Let's go to the book of Job, <clears throat> chapter 4, starting off at verse 7. Remember, I pray thee, whoever perish being innocent, or where were the righteous cut off? So these, these three women that, you know, got deleted by a relative, which was, you know, a son, a cousin, and a... a, 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 a a father of, of her children, which basically is supposed to be her husband, but you know how this how this world goes, uh, was you know taken out by him, because the Lord you know pre-programmed the the night before this happened to put it in his head to do this, man. And furthermore, it was already written in this man's life for this to go down like this. And everybody that you see right here, everybody that you see right here was it was written in their lives for uh, their relative to take them out this way, man. Because the Lord ordained this, man. Okay? Job 4, verse 7. Remember, I pray thee, whoever perished being innocent, or where were the righteous cut off? So none of these people are innocent, man. Okay? Because you have to fi figure we've been here before. We've been here multiple times. So we're also paying for our transgressions, our sins, you know, in our past lives and also in this life. So whatever they did in their past lives and this life, the Most High saw fit that they be taken out and judged this way. Even as I have seen, they that plow iniquity and sow wickedness reap the same. So there's no telling of what, what type of lifestyle they live, what type of abomin abominable filthy works they were committing, what type of iniquities they had under their belts. None of that, man. Okay? Because you come back in your same lot in the same things that you was doing before. You know, just like a prophet comes back in his lot, so those same spirits that rebelled and that was, you know, uh, wicked and didn't do things how Yahweh Bashim Yahweh told them to do, they come back in their same lot, man. So there, again, there's no telling what these people were involved in, again, in their past lives and also now, man. Okay? And, you know, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh is literally making our hearts cold, man. Because, you know, what we're seeing right now is nothing compared to what's going to happen in the very near future, man. You're going to be having Israelites <laughs> dropping like that, man. Left and right. Okay, a thousand at their wayside, at their right side, at their left side. But it shall not come nigh unto thee, man. You know, roughly paraphrasing, I believe, uh, Psalms 91. Okay, but you know, whatever you sow, you shall reap. You know, you want to sow and produce and advertise and push and be about wickedness so the lord is going to bring wickedness and evils upon you man all right matter of fact let's jump let's jump to colossians uh colossians so like yeah chapter three and you know these, these are just some oldies but you know goodies just get just to get straight to the point colossians chapter 3 verse 25 but he that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong which he have done and there is no respect of person. So you do wrong, you're going to get a horrific, brutal, grievous judgment for it, man. Okay, so you know, it, oh, it was sad that he did this, he did that. He, Yes, he did it, you know, physically, but the Lord used this Jake right here. The Lord used this Jake, this, this son, this cousin, this uh, husband slash father of the children of, of his uh, ex-wife or, or his wife in general. Okay, the Lord used this man to take out these women, okay, because of the wrong that they have committed, not only in this life, but their past lives, man. Okay, and, and that's always the thing with our people, man. Our people are just completely off and just completely wicked as hell. And that's why we understand why the Lord is giving you these judgments that he's giving you, man. Okay, so if you're going to do wrong, you're going to get, you're going you're gonna to get a judgment that you, that you know, that you deserve, basically. Yahweh Hashem Yahshua does not make any mistakes, man. All his judgments are righteous and balanced and just all together, man. Thus saith, uh, I believe, uh, Psalms 9 and 16 or Psalms 19, okay? But again, Colossians 3 verse 25, But he that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong which he hath done. And we know daggone well that our people commit wickedness and elevate and prosper in it every single day, man. It's easy to be wicked, and the more the more the more the more you live, the longer you go. Every day that you, that you wake up, you 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 commit more and greater evils than you than, than you have committed the day before. 
okay you amplify and intensely increase in wickedness every single day man okay period man and, and that's why you know me myself and other beloved brothers elder apostles elders elder bishops and elders on down you know that's why we do some of these lessons to keep us in point and also to you know uh, uh, through the fear of the Lord we persuade many you know uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 I believe verse 10 or 11 you know and, and, and we give we deliver the message how the Lord wants us to, to, us, wants us to deliver the message man you know uh, cry out loud spare not spare not your feelings man okay and the prophets didn't come comfortable the prophets didn't come to, to speak to you in soft words to try to convince you no the prophets gave it to you raw and uncut man so if you don't like how I'm preaching you know, I don't give a fuck about your comments. It's just going to get deleted and blocked, man. Especially if you're a damn woman. I had a woman come on uh, the comment board about uh, the Lord is warning the one, one of the sisters. And just because the Jake that was on the beginning of the clip, she got mad that it, it, it got turned off. I didn't turn off the clip. The clip, that was that was all that was, that was, all that was on the clip. So like you. And furthermore, you know, no, uh, no, uh, 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 every um, it's not just one man that's supposed to push the message. It's supposed to be a lot of men out there in the highways and the byways. So please direct me, since you want to take up for that guy, which I said nothing bad about him. But the only thing that I said is that he's saying that you're not going to hear this nowhere else. That's bullshit. That's completely bullshit. So if you don't like the way that I deliver, the way I speak, uh, how I preach, how I teach, cool. That's no problem. Go listen to somebody else. Unsubscribe. Do your thing. But you making your comment, I'm just going to block and delete you, man. Especially if you're a woman. And you women, shut the fuck up. Okay? You, you, you self-willed, shameless bitches, man. And that's why the Lord is executing women like this, man. Okay? Because these are shameless, these are shameless, self-willed bitches, man. And, and, he, and they got exed out by a fucking nigga. And if you don't like that, fuck you. Continuing on. Let's jump to Wisdom of Solomon. Chapter 16, starting off at verse 13. Because again, the Lord controls all, man. For thou hast power of life and death. Do you hear that? For thou hast power of life and death. Thou leadest to the gates of hell and bringest up again. It's, and, and, and that hell is talking about the grave. It's not talking about no goddamn uh, uh, red man with a pitchfork and horns in his head and with, with flames all around his throne. Nah, man, it's talking about the grave, all right? A man indeed killeth through his malice, okay? And that's, this is a prime example of a man killing through malice, killing through wrath, killing through anger, okay? Because he felt betrayed, you know, by all those people that he took out. For whatever they did to him, we don't know because obviously they took, they, you know, the uh, sheriffs or the police, you know, they, they, they uh, took him out because, you know, it, it, was, it was either them or him. And you know me, if I was a cop and I was in, if I'm in that situation, it's gonna be you. Shit, it ain't gonna be me. Okay, but that man, you know, this was this is his malice. And the spirit, when it is gone forth, returneth not. Neither the soul receive up cometh again. But it is in, but is but it is not possible. Okay, but it is not possible to escape thy hands. So who, to escape whose hand? Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shah, the heavenly Father, man. It's impossible to escape his hands, man. Especially when it comes to judgment, man. Okay, man, it's like it. Forgive me. That's off. When it comes to anything. Okay, when it comes to anything, you cannot escape the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Shem, Yahweh, Shai's hands, man. But you just want to hope and pray that you don't want to be on the judgment side uh, being led to your demise, your destruction, your death. Okay? Period, man. The Lord controls all, for thou hast power of life and death, man. That should make you fear. That should make you tremble. That should make you want to walk correctly. Take heed to what's being spoken and not be offended on how somebody delivers the damn message, man. Okay? I'm getting tired of you fucking women, man. Okay? You're not in the truth if you speak in it. And also, too, you're not in the truth. If you say you're you're in the truth and you're married, you have a husband. Do you talk to your husband like that? Because I'm not your fucking husband. Don't come on my comment board talking shit to me, bitch. Okay? I don't give a fuck about your opinion. You don't like how it's being, what's being spoken, what's being taught? Go to somebody else, man. I'm not your husband. All right? And if you talk like that and treat your husband like that, he ain't no fucking man. 
A lot of you fucking women are going to die, man. A lot of you women are going to die, man. If you don't shut the fuck up and get in line, man. Let's continue. Hebrews chapter 10, starting off at verse 30. For we know him that have said, Vengeance belongeth unto me. And this is the Lord saying this. I will recompense, say of the Lord Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, and again, the Lord Yahweh shall judge his people. So what's the Lord judging our people? What's the Lord doing this, man? And he can do it any way he sees fit. Okay, he can use a, a man. He can use a, a car accident. He can use the weather. He can use sickness. He can do it any way he sees fit. Or he can just have you drop dead. Okay. Verse 31, it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living power, Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai. And again, to fall into his hands for, for your destruction, your demise, your, your, uh, your death, man, your judgment. Because you don't know how it's going to play out. You don't know how the Lord's going to bring it, man. And, and, and especially if you're evil, you're wicked, it's not going to be nice. He's not going to be considerate to show you remorse. Because you wouldn't consider it in your ways and what you was doing and transgressing and mocking and scoffing at the, at the Heavenly Father, man. Thinking you can just do what you want and you're going to keep on continuously getting away with it, man. Okay? Period, man. This should make you fear, man. This should make you fear. Second address. Chapter 15, starting off at verse 26. So like at 24. Second Edges chapter 15, starting off at verse 24. Woe to them that sin and keep not my commandments, saith the Lord Yahweh. And that woe goes into destruction. So that's what you see and hear in this video. It was destruction. It was judgment. Because these women did not, so like these women and, and this one man did not keep or fear and tremble or even uh, attempt to uh, acclimate themselves in the law, statutes, and commandments and take heed to the obedience and being in subjection to Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shah. All right. So the Lord had the man take out three of them real quick, and then the Lord had the slave patrol. I'm sorry, excuse me, the police take out him. The Lord executed everybody in one day, and he could have did it. He could have did it in, in, in with one stone if he wanted to. Nothing is impossible with Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shah. Second Edges 15 verse 24. Woe to them that sin and keep not my commandments, saith Yahweh. I will not spare them. Go your way, ye children, from the power. Defile not my sanctuary. So the Lord's not going to spare you, especially when it comes to the judgment, man. When your time is up, when your card is being pulled and he's telling that deaf angel, hey, look, go handle this business real quick. And them death angels is eager. They're, they're, they're pacing back and forth, waiting to bring forth judgment, waiting to do what the Lord tells them to do, man. And we, we hope and pray that we don't have that type of ticket. We hope our ticket, it says salvation, says uh, uh, redemption, okay, says protection, says give this man and, and the people that I, that I bring to him protection, guidance, direction, okay? Verse 26. For the Lord Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, knoweth all them that sin against him. So you can't, is there's nothing that you are doing that is not known to the Heavenly Father and his son, Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai. So you you sit, you 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 live in your best life. You out here being as wicked as you want to be here in Babylon the Great. Okay, being vow, being the most filthy, abominable Israelite you, you want to be. And you really think that 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 the Lord has your best interest in hand, which he does. And that best interest is going to be putting your ass to death. Unless he awakens you to repent and to follow his guidelines, man. And you're part of that predestinated lot. For the Lord Yahweh knoweth all that sin against him, and therefore delivereth he them unto death and destruction. Do you hear that? And therefore he, Yahweh, delivered them 
unto death and destruction. So that death and destruction is not going to be quick, swift, nor it's going to be painful. He's going to make sure you feel every single second of that pain. He's going to keep your spirit and your body to make sure that you know it came from him, man. And then that, and then after your your spirit leave that body, where you gonna go? You're gonna go stand before the throne, man. You're gonna see the heavenly Father and His Son. Well, it's like a matter of fact, I believe you're gonna see Yahweh Shah first, if I'm not mistaken. And if I'm wrong in it, the brother can correct me. But let's continue. Let's jump to the book of Romans, chapter six, verse. 23 for the wages of sin is death for the wages of sin is death so these people were highly influenced and overwhelming themselves in sin okay that lifestyle was nothing but sin because the lord is not going to put away and put to death righteous israelites man okay enoch got translated okay um elijah got translated if i'm saying his name right salak it you know, and those are righteous men. Okay? For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of the Most High is eternal life through Yahweh Hamashiach, our Lord. And that's what we believe and hope that we have is that gift of life from Yahweh Hamashiach, man. We hope and believe that we um, are doing what is pleasing in the eyes of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shah. We're going to be preserved and kept safe. From all the horrific, brutal, grievous judgments that he's going to bring upon the earth, man. Okay? Because, you know, as it states again, for the wages of sin is death. That's that's the, it's only, it's only two forms of uh, uh, restoration. It's only two forms of restoration. That's the, the first restoration is going to be death. And the second restoration is going to be uh, activating you. Breathing that life into you, which is that knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, uh, the um, that wisdom, and you know, uh, obviously, start feeding you the edification and the 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 nutrients that you need that come from the, our Bible, and you know, for you to live the life of a uprightly Israelite, and you know, hopefully, be part of that again, predestined a lot, man. Those are the only two restorations, okay. Well, let's close out. Uh, this is the book of Sirach, chapter 39, I believe is what I want. Um, Sirach, yeah. Okay, Sirach, chapter 39, starting off at verse 28. There be spirits that are created for vengeance. And this is a spirit right here created for vengeance. Okay, this this man's purpose in, in life, you know, regardless if y'all want to believe it or not, because everybody has a purpose. This man's purpose in life <laughs> was, you know, obviously to be have a video made of him by one of the prophets, or the one right beside him, a prophet, and for him to take out the three people that he took out. That was the purpose of his life. Okay, and obviously, you know, to bring forth uh, the children that he brought forth for whatever, you know, the Lord's going to do with his uh, children. Okay, because his children might be saved or they might get destroyed. Who knows? Only time will tell. There be spirits that are created for vengeance, which in their fury lay on sore strokes. In the time of destruction, they pour out their force. Okay, in the time of their destruction, they pour out their force and appease the wrath of him that made them. So what does that mean? Appease the wrath of him that made them. So it... it it, it, it makes the most high Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai happy, delightful to, for, to accomplish these things and to have these things done. Okay, he embraces that. Okay, and it, it, it calms his anger. It also, uh, so I can bear that you, you know, it, it calms his anger. It also, you know, uh, I can't think of the word I'm looking for. It's right on the tip of my daggone tongue. Okay, but it appeases, it appeases his the most high Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shah spirit, man. Okay. I'm gonna read on. Verse 29. Fire and hell and famine and death, all these were created for vengeance. Teeth of wild beasts and scorpions, serpents, and the sword 
punishing the wicked to the to, to destruction. And the sword that he used is the modern day sword, which is the gun. Okay, that's what he used. And the first person he took out was his mother. Okay, and then the second person was his cousin. And then the third was his baby mama. Verse 31. They shall rejoice in his commandment. So didn't I say like the, the angels are waiting, they're pacing back and forth. And as soon as they get that, that card, that calling from the, from the heavenly father, they just, they're gone. They're gone. They're eager. They're eager and yearning to uh, uh, accomplish and do the task that the Lord has um, created them to do, man. Okay, so they're eager to put in work, man. Okay, you you you, you got these angels that's just sitting back, just like, man, you know, we, when Lord, when we when, when going to be able to, you know, start to have fun putting this work, man. You know, in the Book of Revelation, it also states it said, um, hold back the winds until, uh, you know, roughly paraphrasing, until we seal the servants in their foreheads. Roughly paraphrasing, they shall rejoice in this commandment, and they shall be ready upon earth when need is. And where their time is come, they shall not transgress his word. So they shall not transgress his word. They ain't going to question the Lord. They ain't going to say they don't, they don't feel like it. They ain't going to say they don't, they don't think this is right. They ain't going to say nothing against the heavenly father or try to buck up against him. Again, they're eager. They're yearning. They're excited. They're just, you know, just got so much, uh, you know, they, they got that, uh, what they say, um, what is it, ADD or something like that? <laughs> the, the, the little um, analogy here. But basically, they got so much energy and everything else to, you know, bring forth these judgments, man. Okay? But, uh, yeah, I'm going to leave it right there, man. You know, I don't want to rock this out, man. I hope and I pray that this is edifying, uplifting, and informative to the truth and say, Aki and Wa Waf. So with that, I'm just going to say, Koho Layam La. Abba Nawa, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rekat Kodash, Watha Wada, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rekat Kodash, for putting the spirit on me, my elder apostles, elder bishops, elders, <clears throat> elders on down, brothers, for doing these epistles for to enlighten you, to inform you, to edify you, and uplift you to the power and spirit and words of Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. May the blessing and election and protection be upon you and your household. Adawan Ratazah. And to the next one. So with that, I'm just going to say, Shalom.